All right, welcome back to the trailer that broke the world series. Um, so in the last video, I started cutting out all our brackets and tabs and arms uh, for the swing arms. So now that they're all cut out, what I need to do is come back in and clean up all the dross and all the, all the residue that's left from the plasma cutting process on all the outside edges and anything where a hole is, deburr everything, get it all cleaned up and ready to go. Um, just so it's, I'll, I'll do all the crappy work on that now and then later it'll be easier to put everything together and deal with just uh, tacking it together, fitting everything and welding it solid. So I'm gonna get everything cleaned up and we'll move on to the next step of fixturing everything and wrapping the side plates of the arms and getting it all put together. So now we've got all our pieces cleaned up. Uh, before I start welding the swing arm together, uh, I wanna go ahead, I'm gonna bend this piece up in the press brake. And what it is, is it's a support plate that goes on the outside of the swing arm just to help stiffen it up a little bit. So I'll get the press brake all turned on and I've got a couple little uh, pieces of tooling here that fit right inside where we're gonna bend. That way I can fold it up into its uh, final shape. So let me get the press brake turned on and we'll get that bent. So now we have our piece all folded up and this is a piece of 3 16 hot roll P&O plate. And like I said, it'll go on the outside of our swing arm once we get it all welded up and smoothed out uh, just to kind of help stiffen the outside of it so we don't get a lot of torsion or twisting in the arm itself. All right, so our parts are all cleaned up. Uh, I got our support brace here all bent up and I came in and I made sure like here where the seam is, I sandblasted that just to get any of the, the oxidation from the plasma cutting off that last little bit. That way we have a nice clean surface to weld to. And I did the same here on this band, which I'll explain what it is in a second. But I went ahead and sandblasted all the mill scale off of that. That way it's uh, all cleaned up, ready to roll. So what this is, is we're going to space our arms apart one inch on the inside, so it gives us about a two and a half inch wide um, control arm. And this pocket here is where the hub assembly is going to go down in, so it bolts on one side. So I rolled this piece of inch and a half by uh, three sixteenths steel into an eight inch circle, and then I kind of peeled it open a little bit. That way I can put it inside. and it snaps back out and it holds real nice and tight. So what I'll do is I'll tack it here where our open spot is and I'll get this all lined up and I'll kind of use this as a guide to where I can come in and attack it in a few spots here, pull the outer arm off and then weld it on the inside. That way it's welded on the inside of the arm and then on the inside of the pocket and while that's off, we're going to put this piece of one inch by one inch by three sixteenths wall tubing. I'm going to stitch weld that to the inside. 
So we can clamp down on this and it'll stay inside and actually help hold the arms together while we're welding the band on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get started on some of the welding and I'll probably finish it up tomorrow. So uh, we'll stay tuned and we will get some of these uh, initial components welded up and started going together. All right, so we got the majority of the pocket welded up yesterday for where the hub is gonna sit inside the arm. So next, we've got this uh, one inch by one inch square tube that I mentioned yesterday that I'm going to weld right about there. So I went ahead and uh, came across and labeled where I'm gonna put our welds, that way everything's nice and symmetrical. Even though it, it doesn't matter because you won't see it, but I still like stuff to, to be pretty nice. So I'm gonna line it up um, with where our shock boss is going to go through and I'm just going to kind of square it to the edge here and I'll go ahead and get it clamped down and then I'll weld up where I've got it marked. All right, so I've got our two halves of the swing arm clamped together and it centers over our recessed area here where the hub is gonna sit and then I'm using where the shock boss goes through, piece of one inch tube lined up and then this here is one of our spindles. So these three points are lining everything up. So the next step from here is I'm gonna take this 3 16 by one inch strapping and I'm going to start fitting it up to our swing arms. That way I can wrap it around, get it tacked and cleaned up. And I'm using one inch square tube to space it. That way I can line up the edge of our one inch by three sixteenth strapping on the corner of each top plate and bottom plate. And then when I weld that, it gives me a nice V section that I can get in and you know have a nice solid weld and when I dress it I'm not really grinding off much of the weld itself. That's why I went ahead and made sure to clean up all the edges and get all the dross and the oxide uh, layer off all that stuff. That way it's nice and clean and now it's so much easier than having to clean it up as I go. So I'll start tacking this up and get it tacked all the way around on the top and then I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the bottom and keep on keeping on with it.
All right, so I've been welding on the swing arm here a little bit and wanted to talk a little bit about how I like to prep things after they've been tacked. So you can see here that I've welded this section and I do it in uh, stitches that are about six to eight inches long. But before I weld, what I like to do is I like to come back with a hard stone and I'll knock some of this tack weld down and I'll clean the seam out in little segments. That way these tacks can help hold uh, everything together and I don't have to worry about the tacks popping as much. But if you don't do that, you're going to get a little bit of a cold spot where your tack was. So by cleaning it out, you're making sure there's no dirt, no corrosion, nothing that's going to contaminate the weld. And it'll give you more of an even weld because you're not coming over top of that tack. And again, that'll give you a little bit of a cold spot underneath. So we'll come in with the grinder and I'll just clean these out a little bit, clean the seam up, and then I'll get back to welding.